Desire came over him he could not arrest. His fingers caught the silver icon around his neck and spun it down to his soul. A cloud of solace that held no rain and floated high above Chicago and had no territorial nature and no territory it could not trespass. A balloon a child released, a rare dog born with wings, broken chain dangling from its collar in the air. He wrote for a spell and picked up the phone. Cordless, it didn't want to come to life. Liberated phones have wills of their own. He grabbed a corded phone and dialed without first listening for a dial tone. Bella? Hey, what's up? She asked. Nothing. I want to see you. Don't you have any friends? No, I'm a loner. What about all your girlfriends? Well, there's them. What about them? You're no loner. You're just a boy in a world full of girls. He thought for a moment. Guess I'm coming over then. He walked almost half the distance to her apartment, picking up the pace between bus stops and turning to check every so often, trotting backward in the street for a moment before he stepped back to the sidewalk. He stepped to the rhythms that doped his head from a tape he mixed a few years back off late night college radio. The bus felt to him like riding on air. Potholes could not rough them up. Only sudden stops that took the standing off the flats of their feet and made them grasp for poles. Will walked around Bella's building to the back. Her bicycle stood on its stand beside the stairs. She lived a floor up. He carried it up for her, negotiated her screen door with his free arm. The light looked yellow behind the screen and dim. The sky had not lost the sun completely. It did not take great coordination to keep the screen door from striking the bike frame, and she did not know he arrived until after he set the bike on its kickstand in the corner by the fridge. She was in the bedroom making the bed with military corners. Her stereo and music held the greatest presence in the room, other than the queen. She liked to hang out on the floor, on the carpet. He knocked on the open bedroom door. She smiled and asked, could he grab the dirt devil from the other room? He did, and vacuumed the carpet for her while she went on to wash the dishes. Still plan on buying a bike? She spoke over the water. Eh, this guy is a 10 speed he wants 50 bucks for. No rust? No strip gears? I checked it out briefly. Saw him riding west the other morning, west of California, on Grand. Into the hood. Yeah, he's got a bad habit. Rides around in his flannel pajamas and a Dr. Seuss hat. Oh, that is a bad habit. Better look the bike over well. He's selling it cheap. Just lost his job with Velocity. Distressed property. Shame on you, Will. Hey, he could do what he wants to do. If it's not me, it's someone else. Oh, I'm glad you're the one buying the bike, she said.